When Dr. Sumya Swaminathan was appointed chief scientist of the World Health Organization, she became the first ever person to achieve this role. Last week in Geneva, she gathered the best in global science and R&D funders at a WHO meeting as part of a wider action plan for the people of Wuhan and beyond. I caught her in Geneva. So the, the whole idea was really to, to gather this group of people together from all over the world. There we were experts in different disciplines, including epidemiology, social science, vaccines, uh, virologists. Um, they came together here to first of all um, look at the state of the art. What do we know about this disease or similar diseases? Secondly, what are the knowledge gaps? And thirdly, to really prioritize the research questions in order of importance and which ones should be addressed urgently as opposed to which ones can be more medium to long term. What more do we know about the epidemiology of this virus and how is that going to help us? We of course don't know the source of this virus, which animal it came from, when it came and when it jumped. It's The virus is closely related to several bat coronaviruses that have been isolated from that region in China, southern China. So, and coronaviruses, uh, the bats have many, many types. So it's likely that this originated in a bat, but then whether it jumped directly to humans or through an intermediate animal, and what animal that is, there have been many uh, suggestions made, but no conclusive results on that. So that's an important area of research. Unless we know that, we can't prevent further events from happening, spillover events. Should we be looking to innovate on an existing therapy rather than starting from the ground up with a completely new vaccine, in a sense. Exactly. So what is needed now is a therapy to save people's lives and to prevent further spread of infection. The vaccine, as you mentioned, is a longer-term product that we might need if, indeed, this becomes an endemic disease in humans and it's you know becomes a disease like flu, which flares up every year. Then people will need a vaccine to prevent this. But right now, the vaccine isn't going to come fast enough to have any impact. So what is important now is best ways of protecting people from getting the infection, including healthcare workers. We've seen a huge number of healthcare workers get infected in this outbreak. It's really unfortunate. And we must find the best ways of protecting healthcare workers. If China had not shared the sequences of the first six genetic sequences they had on an open platform, the world would not have been as prepared because Within a few hours of those sequences being shared, labs around the world were able to create diagnostic tests to test people in their own countries. And vaccine companies and academics working on vaccines were able to create constructs. These infections can affect anyone, anywhere. They can arise anywhere. It's a matter of chance that it came in China this time. Tomorrow it could be arising in some other country. And so I think it's more and more important that we look at this as a test of global solidarity, global strength and global preparedness. The China Current continues its special coverage on the coronavirus outbreak. Go to our social media at The China Current and our website for interviews, videos and podcasts. I'm James Chow. Thank you.